Thank you for joining us on the Rose Church Podcast. For more information about this podcast or other resources, please visit rosechurch.org or follow us on social media at Rose Church PDX. Well, hey, welcome to church. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. Uh, my name's Andrew, uh, Julia, my wife and I, we're the pastors here at Rose Church, and we're so thankful you come and spend the afternoon with us. And um, however you got in this room, wherever you came in this room, thank you for being here. We're really, really excited for it. Uh, one thing that I would like to uh, bring up, we are two more Sundays in this building until we get to our new home at the OLC. We are super, super excited for it. On that Sunday, it is not only our first day in our new building, but it is also our second year anniversary on that day in that building, which is going to be huge. But also, even just to make it bigger, we are having our baptism Sunday on that week. And so can I... Yeah, it's a big deal. It's one of our favorite Sundays. But can I really, really challenge you? If you are newer to Jesus, maybe you lifted a hand recently and um, accepted Jesus. Maybe you've been coming in for a while and you're, what is my next step and what should I do? Would you please consider getting water baptized? Um, maybe you did as a child, but you didn't like, really make a decision as an adult. Maybe it's been a while. But um, would you please sign up for that day? We'll be having baptisms all day long. You can grab the Connect card on your seat or go by the Next Steps bar. We can help you that way, but if you are interested at all, maybe you have some questions about it, but you're interested in making that next step in your faith and in your journey, would you please, please sign up for that day on the Connect card? And real quick, would you mind grabbing that Connect card? Every single one of you, it's on your seat. It's a black card. Would you mind grabbing it? It's on your seat, or maybe it fell down. Um, maybe you're sitting on it, but would you, would you grab that Connect card? On there, we have a place that you can sign up to serve. Oh, thank you, sir. On there, you can sign up to serve. Um, we're moving to a new building, and we're actually going down to two services. We'll be at 930 and 1130 for now on um, at that new building. It seats 600 people, not 300 people, so we have a lot more room. And so we're going down to two services for a bit. We'll add a third uh, eventually, um, I'm sure. Uh, but we need more help. We need maybe around 100 new volunteers to help and servant leaders to help us at the church. And as of recent, we've had six teams at the church. Um, it's, it's worked up until the size that we're at now. Those six teams are much too big, and the teams are, are a little too hard for certain uh, people that maybe aren't on staff to oversee. And so we've gone from six teams to 21 teams. And they're a lot smaller, a lot easier, and a lot closer for you to serve with friends and family. And so we have we have a parking lot team now. Now, for some of you that were here back in the in the beginning of the announcement of us buying the building, I made some jokes about us buying golf carts. Those weren't jokes. We've bought golf carts. With our logo and like, we have, it's going to be the funnest. We have like little mics for everyone and we have like polos. We're going to, I'm just kidding, we're going to do that. But we do have golf carts. So we need some help with the golf cart team, with the security team, cafe, hosts, welcome, events, admin, metrics. There are 21 teams for you to choose from. Can I beg you, if you have found nowhere to serve yet, would you grab that card right now and just check one of those teams? Uh, not all 21 are on there yet, just because this is as of recent, so our new cards will have them on there. But could you just mark a box? I want to serve uh, Zach, our staff team lead. We'll call you and get you plugged into a team. But we need all the help we can get in our new building. We need many more volunteers and servant leaders. So can you please, please join one of our teams, especially if this is home for you. Please join with us and lead and serve with us. Well, here we go. We're going to jump into the Bible today. And I am really excited to speak and to share what's in my heart today. We started a new series last Sunday called Major Keys. And if you missed it, you should jump into the podcast and listen to it. Today's part two of Major Keys. But really the theme and the heart for my series is the kind of the phrase I'm using is we're not interested in growing, big, uh, growing a big church. We're interested in growing big people. That's my goal. That's our goal. Not to grow a big church. It's to grow big people. And so we talk about Major Keys on how can we grow. How can we develop? How can we change? And so we're going to continue that thought today. I want to read two portions of scripture as we get ready to share today. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, I can't wait for no more trains. Thomas, your days are numbered, buddy. Ephesians 4. I want you to pick up some key phrases that Paul is writing. He says, instead, we will speak the truth in love. Growing, there it is again, growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body. Catch these phrases. Who Christ, who is the head of his body, which is the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. There's our phrase again. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Let's jump over to 1 Corinthians 12. 
The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head, uh, the, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require these special treatments. Look at this. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to these parts that have less dignity. We'll end here. Look at these phrases. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all members care for each other. I love these two sentences. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. I want to continue our series today, Major Keys, and I want to title our talk today. Let me, let me explain it here in a moment. But my title for our talk is God's Not Enough. Now, let me explain it. I'm not a heretic, okay? Obviously, God's enough. But let me explain what I mean by that phrase. God's not enough. Let's pray as we jump into these beautiful verses. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you so much that you are here, that you want to speak to us, that you want to reveal yourself to us. God, I pray as we continue this series and really talking and looking about growing and developing and changing and becoming everything that you have for us to become. God, we thank you for it. God, I know that none of us care about the Super Bowl today, so I pray it would end in a tie. And I pray the Seahawks would be deemed as the winners because they tied. And Lord, I thank you that Dame is on fire right now. Continue to anoint his hand. In your name I pray. And everyone said? Sports. My birthday was uh, a few Sundays ago. And uh, my wife, it was on a Sunday. So my wife, we, we wake up, we're on our way to church. Like, I, I got you a birthday present. You're going to love it. I said, okay. So it's either going to be at clothes or um, something that I like. We get to church and the team is like, hey, happy birthday, whatever, whatever. And I get a card. Uh, they just give me a card. I'm like, oh, it's probably a gift card to a store to go shop or something. My wife leans over and she's like, it, it's a gift for um, 10 sessions with a trainer to go work out. And I was like, ah, it would be so funny if that was true. I thought she was joking. The day ends, I open the card, and it's actually happy birthday. Here's 10 sessions to go work out with a trainer. If that's not a statement, you should lose some weight. I don't know what else she could say. It's almost like when people are like, do you want a breath mint? But you never asked for one. That's them saying, you should have a breath mint. This is my wife saying, you should lose some weight. Wasn't excited about it whatsoever. I was actually really upset. This was my birthday present. She's like, well, it's more of a birthday present to me. I was like, well, then wait till April for your birthday. Okay, this is not my present. And, but you know what? I was like, you know, I want to work out. I, I want to, I, it's been a desire of mine to get back in shape and to start, you know, I, I play basketball a lot. So I want to continue to play basketball until I'm like 50. I don't want to like just stop. I love sports. I want to keep playing. I was like, you know what? I probably should start working out and, and lose some weight and get in better shape. So fine. I've had the desire. I want to. So my man, Brian, I don't know if he's here today. He's probably backsliding. Um, <laughs> to my, I'm just kidding. Um, but Brian and I, we've been working out uh, a couple times now a week. Hooping every time we, we, we hoop and we work out. We do some other stuff and drills and whatever. And so I've been, I've been really consistent. And it's interesting that I've always had the desire to work out. I've wanted to. I thought it was a good idea. I just didn't do it. I would go once or twice and then stop like many of you do, right? Like we sign up for something, we go a few times, and we just inevitably stop or we forget and we get out of rhythm. It's like I'll do it next year, right? I would like to submit to you today the growth that you are looking for does not come with desire. The growth that you're looking for comes with community. No amens on that one. Okay, so I want to submit to you today that the, the major key that we need to talk about today is life in community. Now, many of you, when I talk about community, you're like, oh, that's, that's right, I should attend church more. That's not what I said. For many Christians, we have confused the idea of church attendance with the idea of living life in community. Those are two very different things. Living life in community and attending church are not the same thing. You can attend a church and sit in a seat and lift your hands and maybe give or maybe serve, you know, a few times a year on your way home, and we're like, I, I, I'm in community. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about church attendance. I'm not talking about being here a couple times a month. I'm talking about living life in community. Change doesn't happen when desire kicks in. Change happens when community kicks in. 
And maybe the change you're wanting isn't about you asking for more desire. It's you surrounding yourself with more people. I've been wanting to work out, but I just didn't do it until I found a group of people, a community to encourage me to work out and hold me accountable to do so. Well, I want to... I wanna, dive down into this for a moment today before we jump into some thoughts because Ephesians 4 and 1 Corinthians 12 both give this idea about a body. A body. In the New Testament, Jesus and Paul and many other writers use a lot of metaphors, illustrations. There's a phrase that Jesus says all the time in the New Testament and it's the kingdom of heaven is like. And then he says all these stories. The kingdom of heaven is like a a wedding and nobody came so I went and found new people. And the kingdom of heaven is like a a field where a rich man finds some things. It's all illustrations. Well, one of the main illustrations in the New Testament is that we are the body of Christ. We're the body of Christ. Now, follow me in this thought. Never thought about this before. I really think the Holy Spirit challenged me with this thought. Let's say you're a hand. You think you're a hand in the body, okay? Let's say this phrase happens a lot. I don't need anybody but God. God's got me. I don't need anybody else. God is my corner. Who cares who's against me, right? We use verses out of context like that. I have God on my side. I don't need anybody else. It's me and him. The only problem with that notion is even God doesn't agree with you. The Bible doesn't agree with you. There is no narrative of that notion or mentality to believe that it's only you and God. It's only you and him on this journey by yourself. It doesn't work that way because if you want to resemble the God that you serve, even he himself lives in community. And it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Even God himself is a living, breathing community. So if you want to resemble him, you must be in community. Now, so if you think you're a hand and you have this notion of belief, it's only you and God. No one else matters. And you as a hand, you know, I don't need the body. Let's disconnect from the body. You automatically disconnect from the head. How many times have you made this statement, I feel distant from God? I wonder how many times you've made that statement. It's actually indicative of the notion that you've left the church. Because when you distance yourself from the head, it might be a sign that you've distanced yourself from the body. It's every time you're like, I just feel distant from God. I just feel like he's distant and I'm distant and I don't know where God is at. Whenever you might feel that notion that God is distant, it might be your spirit saying you've disconnected from the body. Because you cannot be connected to the head and disconnected from the body. They go one in the same. So maybe if you want to get closer to the head, you should get closer to the body. See, the Garden of Eden, when sin came into the Garden of Eden, we think it just separated us from God. Sin didn't just separate you from your father. It separated you from your brothers and sisters. The cross... And the grace of Jesus is not just restoring you back to your father. It is restoring you back to your brothers and sisters. The gospel isn't just fixing your vertical relationships. It is fixing your horizontal relationships. It does both in the same. So the cross isn't just fixing you and God. It's fixing you and them. Because God is not enough in this journey. It's not just you and God. It is you and the body. It is you and brothers and sisters. I would like to dive into this thought today and maybe prod you a bit, and and some of my thoughts can be very direct, and so please bear with me, but I want to help you today. I mean, maybe a little more teachery than normal, but I want to help you today because I want you to change, grow, and adapt. And once again, we're not building a big church. We are building big people. And I want to give you some ideas when it comes to living in community. Number one is this. You don't become yourself by yourself. You don't become yourself by yourself. There are three types of illustrations that God uses in the Old Testament more than any other illustration. It is sheep, that he's the shepherd, we are the sheep. Children, he is the father, we are his children. And clay, he is the potter, we are the clay. That is the three biggest um, illustrations um, or metaphors that God uses in the Old Testament pertaining to you and I. Okay, what's just, that, that sounds really cute and fun. Uh, if you do some study about sheep, sheep are really stupid. <laughs> sheep will straight fall off the hill if you tell them to. You lead them, they'll just fall right off. Did you know a sheep is so stupid, if it falls on its back, it cannot turn back over. It will die on its back. That's how stupid sheep are. And God goes, you're my sheep. And we're like, yeah! And he's like, it's not that good. No, it's no, no. And then he goes, you're my child. You know how stupid children are? I have two of them. 
Do you know how soft clay is? Just ruin the whole, the whole cup, the whole saucer, one fingerprint, ruin. What is God trying to give us in the narrative or the motif of the Old Testament? You better be careful who leads you because you are stupid. You better be careful who touches you because you are soft and moldable. And you better be careful who disciplines you because you act like a child a lot. So what it was, the Old Testament was saying, you better be careful who you choose to lead you. You better be careful who you choose to shape you. And you better be careful who you choose to discipline you. Because you're a lot like sheep, you're a lot like a child, and you are very soft like clay. Why? Because you don't become yourself by yourself. When you get success in life, you look back and say, thank you to that coach, thank you to that parent, thank you to that cousin, thank you to that neighbor, that teacher stuck out his life for me, and he, he pulled me aside and helped me out in my homework. Why? Because you don't become yourself by yourself. You are the sum total of the voices in your ear. The sum total. So you might want to consider every voice that has your ear because you are becoming the sum total of the voices in your ear. So if you want to change your life, don't change your life by making better decisions. Change your life by who has your ear. This isn't just a spiritual thing. This is a life thing. You will have the average income of your five closest friends. So no wonder you're poor. No wonder you will have the emotional IQ of your five closest friends. This isn't just a biblical thing. You will become the five closest people to you. You don't become yourself by yourself. Now, can I just submit this idea to you? I'm going to prod a little more today than normal, but please don't take my tone out of context. Stop asking people for things they don't have to give you. Case in point, stop asking your insecure friends to pray about your insecurity. Stop asking people with below average marriages to hold you accountable for a better marriage. Don't ask your friends with horrible budgets to pray about your money. Find an older, matured, seasoned, and proofed person. And say, you know what? I need some help because I want to become something and someone, but I don't want to ask somebody who doesn't have it to give it to me. And this is difficult. You have to show your weakness. So you have to go to somebody who's good with money and say, I'm bad with money. Can I show you my bank accounts? You'll see how much money I spend on food. How much money I spend on stuff I don't want for people I don't like. And you have to be insecure for a moment and be open and go, you're better at this than me. Let me show you me. And can you help me grow and become bigger as a person? Because you are not becoming yourself by yourself. You are being shaped like clay. You're being led like sheep. And you are being disciplined like a child. And you need to be wiser and smarter who you put in those positions. Because you are becoming something. We've talked about this. Number two. Let's, let's dig a little deeper. Just buckle your proverbial seatbelts. Those who don't listen don't change. There is only one group of people in the entire Bible that God says you're stupid. And this is not me. Don't judge me today. Talk to God. Look at Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 1. To learn, you must love discipline. For it is stupid to hate correction. That's the NLT. The ESV says you are stupid and foolish if you hate correction. I didn't say it. God said it. We have become so easily offended. In every area of our life. And therefore it equates to we cannot be corrected or challenged. Because we're too easy to offend. Because we actually think we don't need to grow. Going back to last week. We don't think we need to grow. So why are you correcting me and challenging me? I don't need to grow. But if you have the understanding I am not here. I'm not finished. I'm not done. Obviously I need to grow. Would you help me and develop me and correct me? Let's take it one step further. Would you maybe not even accept correction? What if you pursued it? 
I don't mean just like, all right, a friend corrects you and you accept it. What if you sat somebody down? I give you permission. I'm pursuing correction. I'm pursuing advice. I'm pursuing discipline. I'm giving you and your wife or whoever the full scope of my life to correct me. If you see something, say it to me. If you see something that's not there, would you please say something to me? I don't want to just accept correction. I want to ask for it. You know what's amazing? And this is phenomenal. You know, you, you drive cars, right? There's a blind spot. That's where accidents come from. It's amazing to me how many humans don't think they have blind spots. I, I can't tell you how many people I meet with or talk to you like, hey, I think you're this way. Or, hey, we see this. I, that's not me. Like, it's, a, it's a blind spot. That guy that's not there. It's a blind spot. Of course, you don't see it. You are blind to it. That's why it's called a blind spot. Let me just submit this really easy idea to you. When you allow someone to correct you, either they're right and you need to change, or they're wrong and you need to change how you communicate. I'm trying to help you today. Either when friends correct you, either they're right and there's a blind spot you need to work on, or they're wrong and you need to readdress how you're coming off. Either way, you win. Either way. You win because you learn how to re re innovate yourself and come across different or you change for the better because there truly was a blind spot. And the Bible says if you hate correction, you are foolish because those who don't listen don't change. Can I go a little deeper? When was the last time you allowed a friend to hold a mirror to your blind spot? I did this last service. I, it, it didn't work well. You should have been here at the 9.30. It, it was a scene. Okay. When was the last time a friend was able to go, do you see this in yourself? Like, what do you mean? You're mean. What are you talking about? No, I'm not. So you go to a new friend. So-and-so said, I'm mean. Do you see this in yourself? I think so, too. I'm going to find a new friend. You just keep going. <laughs> they ain't loyal. Find a new one. Do you think I'm mean? Yeah, it's what you do. You find somebody has no context. She's known you for six weeks. Do you think I'm mean? No, you're the nicest. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> See, I told you the other four were wrong. Be, listen, ask friends to correct you with context. Not your Sunday, you. Do you think I'm nice? You're the best door greeter ever. Anybody can hide themselves for an hour. Anyone can hide it for a day. Find some friends with context. Um, yeah, she's done this with the last seven guys. It, it's been going on for a while. But the new friend goes, oh, he's the best. This is a great decision. Because they don't have history and context. So find some friends that go, here's a mirror. Do you see your blind spot? Can I go a little deeper? We have so many nurses in our church. If anything ever goes down, we're good. <laughs> we'll all be healed and saved. Ask a nurse. When one area gets sick, if that area doesn't get healed, it leaks to the healing areas of your other body. So an unhealthy hand can affect a healthy leg. If we're the body, that is why we should care for the state of everyone else around us. Because I know I'm so connected to you. If you start getting sick, it's inevitably going to get me sick. So I care so much about your health, about your attitude, about your DNA. Because what you are doing is going to leak over to my side. And what I'm doing is going to leak over to you. So as a body, we better pay attention to each other's health. And get a mirror and say, do you see this? Why do you care so much? Because it's going to get to me eventually. Why do you care so much about my health? Because your sickness will get into my health. If we ain't careful, because why? We are the body. We are connected. Those who don't listen, don't change. I hope I'm helping you today.
so I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to say this. When, when a friend, so I'm, I'm just trying to word this right. When a friend challenges you, if you are insecure, you feel cornered. If you're confident, you feel surrounded. If you're insecure and everybody's against you, right? Everyone is haters. By the way, you don't have any. Calm down. No one cares. Get over yourself. You don't have haters. But when everyone is against you and you feel cornered, it's a sign of insecurity. But when you feel confident, you feel surrounded. Thank you so much for challenging me. Thank you so much for being on my side. Thank you for pointing it out. I didn't even see that in myself. Thank you. I feel surrounded. I'm not cornered. I'm not defensive. I'm not pushed up against the wall. I'm surrounded by my body. I'm surrounded by my friends. Thank you for challenging something in me I did not see. Because those who don't listen don't change. Now, please do not hear me out of context. I'm not saying, let's have a whole church of people in the lobby. I want to talk to you for a second right after service. I got two things I've been seeing for a minute. Can you sit down for a second? You got some time? I've been waiting for a long time to say these two things. I ain't saying that. Let's have a bunch of connect groups that just challenge each other all day long. You done? I got some things to say back to you. No. I'm not submitting this at all. At all, I'm not saying that whatsoever. That would be the worst church to go to in the whole world. Ever since you come here, y'all, all right, who's going to get me today? That would be the worst thing in the whole world. But I am saying to have some friends to check your blind spots. My third and final, can I go a little deeper? Your accountability is only as good as your honesty. So at this point, you're probably like, all right, let's get an accountability partner. Such a church thing to say, by the way. All right, who wants to sign up for my X three eyes? Who wants to sign up to have my passwords? All right, who's my accountability partner? That's a good notion. It's a good start. But your accountability partner is only as good as your honesty. Hey, you doing good? Yeah, doing great. Great check-in. Have you talked to your accountability? Yeah, I told me yesterday we're doing great. Okay, so that's not the notion and the point of having, having an accountability partner. Do you have your, anyone in your life that you can pull back the curtains of your soul and say, this is, uh, this is me. Not your Sunday you, your Friday at 2 a.m. you. And by the way, those are two different people. You know it and I know it. I don't mean like your church, you're like, ah, oh, you're serving great, you should serve better. Like, no, I mean like at the depths of the soul, the darkness of your night. Hey, uh, this is me. Because if you're insecure, you feel cornered. But if you're okay, you feel surrounded. Look at James, James 5. Confess your sins to each other. Confess. Well, yeah, if they want to check out on me, they'll call me. Why don't you call them? They haven't called me in a few Sundays. They don't know where I'm going. They're not checking in on me. I have something to tell them, but then they call me. No, no. Confess is... Kind of the notion of like, you are confessing. They're not asking, you're confessing. Don't just wait for them to call you. Call them. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be judged. That's what we think. Confess your sins to each other so that you might feel better than the other part of the body. Confess your sins so you feel holier than those that are screwing up more than you. But James says, you know why you should confess to each other? Because it brings healing. God can't heal what you won't hide. If you keep hiding it, he can't heal it. Do you know where things get moldy and gross in the darkness? Hidden. Light brings healing. Light brings exposure. James 5, confess them to one another so that you might be healed. When's the last time you thought confession brought healing? Think about that. I'm not doing well. I I need to get healing. I should confess. Because your accountability is only as good as your honesty. And I want to change. I want to grow. I want to become better. 
life and community. Not church. Not ch- Hear me. I'm, I hope you come to church every Sunday. I don't want to preach by myself. Please keep coming. But I'm not talking about church attendance. I'm not talking about serving more. I'm talking about life in community. And guess what? It's going to be hard. You're going to offend each other. You're going to have to say I'm sorry a few times. The best relationships are the hardest to fight for. They're not just easy. And me and my best friend never had any bumps. One of you were lying. One of you were hiding something. Sundays bring revelation. Community brings change. I, I, I've been in church a long time. Pastor Steve, we've been in church a long time. I don't think anyone changes on Sundays. I don't. I think revelation occurs of the things you want to change on Sundays. But actual change happens in community of the revelation you acquired in Sunday. It's a major key. Life in community. You're like, man, I've been going here for a while. All you preach about is Jesus and, and small groups. Get used to it. If you don't like that, you might want to find a different church. I'm going to hit those two drums as long as I'm the pastor of this church over and over and over again. If you're looking for a church to just sit in a chair and go home and be by yourself, I'm going to find you. The welcome team, there's 46,000 of them. They will find you. Our prayer team is going to find you. Why? Because we're not here just to play church. We're not here just to attend some service and do something. We're here to grow and develop and change and become everything God has for us. And that doesn't happen in Sunday attendance. It happens in community. Can I pray for you? Can you bow your head and close your eyes? I want to pray for you as we get ready for worship. If you're here today and you're like, man, I'm I'm not a follower of Jesus. I'm newer to this, and maybe a friend invited me, this is so new to me, or maybe you're going for a few weeks considering Jesus. I don't know how or why you got in this room. But if you're saying, you know what, I'm not a follower of Jesus. I'm not a Christian, I'm not a believer. And I wanna, this person you've been talking about, this person we've been singing about, I wanna accept Jesus in my life today. I wanna have my air, my sin, and my shame erased. I wanna, how, do I, how do I change? Well, it starts with Jesus. That's the, that's the first base, that's where you start. Can't do anything without him being the Lord and Savior of your life. That's you today across this place. Like, that's me. Would you just put your hand up and wave it at me so I know who I'm praying for? Say, that's me. I want to accept this prayer today. Awesome. Thank you. You know what I was saying? That's me. Just put your hand up and wave it at me so I know who I'm praying for. Awesome. Anyone else? Just real quick. Just put it up. Signifying that's, that's for me. That prayer's for me. Awesome, thank you. See you. Jesus, I pray right now for every heart, every soul that's opening themselves up to you. We thank you that you give us the power to truly change. From the inside out, God, it starts with you. I, I pray and I thank you that your grace is sufficient for our error, our sin, our shame. And I thank you that it's free. We can't earn it. It's not about pedestals and achievements and accomplishments. God, we, it's a free gift that we receive today. By the name I pray. And everyone said, man, can we stand to our feet today? We're gonna go into worship. And if you're newer to our church, the words on the screen right behind me, we have prayer in the very back. If you want prayer for anything at all today, there's a prayer team in the back. But let's, let's lean in today to worship. You lift your hands, you lift your voice. Let's sing these songs together. Let's go into worship.